Welcome to lesson 2 of 7.5. 7.5 is titled Solving Quadratic Equations by Factoring, and it's based on the following premise. The premise is that if we have one expression a times another expression b is equal to 0, then either a is equal to 0 or b is equal to 0, because in order for a product to equal 0, one of the expressions must equal 0. <clears throat> so, if we have a factored form a quadratic equation like this one here, which is x minus 8 times x minus 2 is equal to 0, then one of those expressions, either x minus 8 or x plus 2, has to equal 0. And in order for that to be the case, either x equals 8 or x equals negative 2. So based on that premise, if we have the factored form of a quadratic equation, we can then solve the quadratic equation. So the, the focus is going to be on factoring. In the first lesson, we learned how to factor these types of problems, 8x squared plus 8x plus 12 is equal to 0. <clears throat> and in the second method, so this lesson here, what you'll notice is that there is no x term, no linear term in this quadratic equation. So in the previous lesson, there was an x term. Okay, so this term here highlighted in yellow, there's an 8x and a negative 7x. In method number two, there is no x term. Before we even start method number two, let me show you how this relates. I'm going to graph the function x squared minus 36, much like the first question is x squared minus 36 equals zero. And we learned in lesson number one that the solutions are related to the x-intercepts because we are trying to determine x values that give you an output or a value of zero. So if I graph this function, these x-intercepts are your solutions. So that x-intercept here is negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And this x-intercept here is positive 6. So our answers are negative 6 and positive 6. Let's see if we can get that by factoring. So since there is an x term missing, one thing you can do is just write it as being 0x. That's helpful for factoring. And then you're going to factor that particular trinomial. So x squared plus 0x minus 36. Okay. So x squared minus 36 and the diagonal terms have to add up to 0x. So we do know that x times x is x squared. And let me show you an incorrect version. If I put plus 4 and minus 9, those do multiply to negative 36. Positive 4 times negative 9 is negative 36. But these terms will not add to 0 x times negative 9 is negative 9x, and 4 times x would be this term, which is 4x. And those two terms do not add to 0. Negative 9 plus 4 is not 0. So that's an incorrect factoring model. The correct factoring model are the only types of numbers that add to 0 are opposites. And the opposite numbers that multiply to negative 36 are positive and negative 6. So those multiply to negative 36, and these terms, negative 6x and plus 6x, do add to 0. So your factored form in this case would be x plus 6 times x minus 6 equals 0. And based on the premise of this section, what that means is either x plus 6 equals 0, which would be x is equal to negative 6. That's one of your solutions, as was shown on your graphing calculator. Here's negative 6. And your other solution would be when x minus 6 equals 0. And if we solve for x, you would have x equals 6. Those there are solutions, positive and negative 6. Uh, in the next one, it's almost identical. What you might want to do, since there's a linear term missing, is put plus 0x. And this is actually called a difference of squares. <clears throat> so if you'd like to factor that again, if you factor the trinomial x squared plus 0x minus 121, you would have factors of x and x. And the two opposites that multiply to negative 121 are positive 11 and negative 11, because this would give you a negative 11x and a positive 11x, which add to 0. So in this case, your factored form would be x plus 11 and x minus 11 equals 0, which would give you solutions of either x plus 11 equals 0, which would give you a solution of x equals negative 11, or the factor x minus 11 equals 0, 
which if you solve for x would give you a value of x equals positive 11. And there are your solutions. Uh, in method number three, what you're going to find out is that there is a greatest common factor. <clears throat> so what you'll notice is that every term, in this case there's only two terms, has something in common. And when terms have something in common, you can factor them out. So the greatest common factor is the largest value that can go into each term of the expression. So in this particular case, again, I could graph it for you if you'd like me to. So let me go ahead and graph it and show you the solution. So if I, if I graph negative 2x squared minus 10x and I graph, it looks like my solutions are negative 5 and 0. So let's go ahead and see if we can get the answers of negative 5 and 0. <clears throat> so what you'll notice is that both of these terms, your greatest common factor, both of these terms can be divided by negative 2. So they both have a negative 2 in them and x. So in this case, that's one of your factors. So negative 2x is one of your factors, and your other factor is what happens when you divide each of those terms by negative 2x. So if I divide this term by negative 2x, the first term, negative 2x squared divided by negative 2x is just x. And if I divide the second term by negative 2x, negative 10x divided by negative 2x is plus 5. And as we learned in the premise, so this is equal to 0, one of these factors, either negative 2x equals 0 or x plus 5 equals 0. Okay, in order for x plus 5 to equal 0, x would have to equal negative 5. And this one here, negative 2 is a coefficient. In order for negative 2 times x to equal 0, you could divide by the coefficient negative 2 to solve and x would equal 0 divided by negative 2, which is 0. So those are, as you can see, our solutions, 0 and negative 5. And in our last example, what you'll notice is that it doesn't equal 0. In order to solve quadratic equations by factoring, first of all, you must make one side equal 0. So I would subtract 7x from each side, and I would factor 4x squared minus 7x. Now, in this case, each term has something in common. They both have an x in them. You can divide them both by x. So the greatest common factor here would be the letter x, which is one of your factors. And your remaining factor is what each term is when you divide them by x. 4x squared divided by x is 4x. And negative 7x divided by x is negative 7. So either x is 0, which is one of your solutions. There's no need to solve for x because it's already isolated. Or 4x minus 7 equals 0. And if you're solving, you would add 7, which is 4x is equal to 7. And then divide by 4, which would give you a value of x equals 7 over 4. And those are your two solutions to this problem. Uh, if you're in my class, what you're going to want to do is do the formative next two problems and have me initial them. One is solving a difference of squares, and one is solving with a greatest common factor.